As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Oh, so beautiful. Tiger Woods making his oh. way around Augusta National. What? What is this? Is Are we having visions here? Nope. That's T. Woods out there playing a little bit of practice round golf at Augusta National. Could he be entering the Masters after the uh, the near amputation of a leg? I hope so. I got to tell you, um, I... I love watching golf on TV. I love the Masters. But I don't know if it's because it was, you know, Tiger's real big stretch or whenever he got rolling. It was whenever my interest in in watching golf and playing golf really got sparked. I don't know what it is. But to me, there's nothing better than watching Tiger Woods in a major. Nothing. It is. It's the best thing in golf. Tiger Woods on a Sunday when he is, he's in the mix. It's the best thing in golf. I'm convinced there will just cause it, it's hard to like, it's hard to describe to young people like how famous, like how big of a deal Tiger Woods was, you know, in the early mid two thousands. Like it's hard to explain, you know, when he was at the height of his power, it's like, he's still, I mean, he's still larger than life right now, but I don't think there's ever going to be anything better in golf in our lifetime. I, I may, maybe his son, I don't know, but I really hope he gets he gets out there and gives it a go. Now, everyone talks, and I've never been to Augusta National. It's certainly it's on the bucket list, but everyone talks about the undulation of the course and how it's you know it's really challenging to walk the entire course, not only for the players, but the patrons. Remember, they don't call them fans, Ted. They call them patrons. So will the leg hold up? I don't know. Maybe that's what he was trying to figure out. But just the thought of him getting out there for the tournament, like it just brings a smile to my face, man. Like it, it makes me so happy. And here's the thing that I love. Um probably anyone else myself included card exemption please <laughs> right but you know in order to do it you got to do it the same way as everyone else i mean that's how he sees it and you know it it's it always gets an eye roll whenever you talk about um you know, the physically demanding playing golf. It's like, really? I mean, come on, they're playing golf out there. But, you know, four days, um, walking the course, hitting probably a thousand balls a day in warm up and post round work and hitting putts and working on your sand game and trying to straighten out the driver. I mean, it's, it's, it's full on. I'm not sitting here trying to say it's the most physically demanding thing ever. Cause we all know it's not, but it's not physically nothing. And the fact that it was an issue before about him making his way around a golf course and like being able to, to go through the demands of playing a major with his back. And now not only is the back still an issue and the knee, now you've got, a leg that, you know, had to go through who knows what surgical repair, uh, all kinds of rehab and stuff. Like, I don't know. I don't know the full story as to what all went on there, but you just add that to the mix. It, it's not his only injury. So I just, I hope he's able to do it because it would be awesome. And even if he's out there just to make his way around and, you know, hope, hopefully make it to where he can play on the weekend. Every single one of us are going to be wondering, could he do it? I could, he make something special happen. That's, that's like the tiger woods stigma, man. It, it, you always feel like something special could happen at any moment. Yeah. And I, I will say this, you, you mentioned kind of all the physical issues. You've got all that in one hand, but then what gives you hope? And the other is that dude's nuts. Like it's, 
he he's he's crazy enough to do it yes right? and, and in the best way i mean that yes. as a compliment and man it would be fun to see him get out there i just i don't know like he's he's got to just have a tremendous amount of pride right i mean you're you're the best golfer ever if if you know it's not going to go well like do you go out there and do you do it you know just uh you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm sure there's part of him going, okay, I don't want to get out there. Cause you have to imagine it. It, it causes Tiger Woods physical and mental pain, pain to play bad golf, right. With how much he's put into it and coming back from this injury and all the stuff he's gone through. Like, I just don't know if he's willing to get out there and be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to suck, but let's do this. I, I just don't know. One of the interesting things is, he is, he's always, uh, very critical of like where he is in his, his golf game. He's always working on something and he's still trying to figure something out and haven't been doing this. Well, I haven't been doing that. Well, all those things he's got to work on, but I guess he was recently asked about like, like where he stands. And apparently he said that his short game and his putting is as good as it's ever been. So for him to say that is like kind of a, a strange moment. So I don't know. It, fascinating to, to see what may occur. I, I'm, I'm kind of with you though. I, I don't want him to see, to, well, I don't want to watch him go out there and like labor around the course and shoot a couple of 81s, you know? Could you imagine how awesome it would be to labor around and shoot 81? On a, on a professional on a major course right not <laughs> not the local me up. U- take, beauty course. take my back lord if it means i go out there and shoot 81 consistently yeah can you imagine sh- shooting 81 at augusta national when it's set up for the the masters and just being so pissed off at yourself but just that's the devastated level. those guys are amazing yeah all right who do you have as your loser of the week OU, OU fans, ah, this was a tough one. Lebius Overton, he was the 23 five-star defensive lineman, reclassified to the 22 class. Oklahoma was one of his his uh, top destinations that in, we thought we were going to have a really good chance at it. He was scheduled to take an official visit the day of the spring game or the weekend of the spring game, and it sounds like after a visit to Texas A and M, Levius Overton is calling off the rest of his trips and is going to be making an announcement as to his destination. So I believe on Friday, and since it's right after the Texas A and M visit, stands to reason that Texas A and M is going to win out on this thing. Yeah. So he was he was just at A and M. And earlier in March, he visited Georgia and Oregon. But yeah, it seems like all signs point to him going to Texas A&M, which would be another addition to the number one recruiting class in the history of recruiting classes that Jimbo Fisher just inked there at A&M. Now, no, 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 not $30 million. They would never, they would never, but just uh, another, another five-star for the Aggies. It's looking like that sucks. His dad went to OU. Come on, Milton. Come on, man. Here's the thing. I I would no doubt love to have a five-star defensive lineman. I think Overton, um, from everything, I, I don't know a whole lot about, like how good he is, but a lot of people think very highly of him and and he's probably going to make someone better, but I still believe totally 100% firmly. It ain't going to matter. It ain't going to matter. We are everything that needs to be done. Every detail that needs to be poured over. All of those things are happening right now at OU and they're going to get great play at defensive line. It's 
it's going to be a work in progress, but they're going to get the right guys in, and those guys are going to go win a championship. I don't know who exactly they are, but like Levius Overton going to Texas A&M, in my opinion, and this is nothing like talking about his skill level or anything, it's not going to have an impact on where OU's going. And you never know. He could he could o- go to A&M, collect his signing bonus, and then transfer to OU here in a couple of years. You know? You never know. A couple of years, a couple of weeks. That's true. The wild, wild west of college <laughs> yeah. football, baby. We'll Let's see you at training camp, uh, Overton. Yeah, we'll see you, Levy. So, come on. Yeah, just take your – collect your money and let's uh, – now I'm – I'm joking about the collecting the money thing. Wish that young man the best, but oh, you would have been a better choice. That's all I'm saying. All right, for my winner of the week, thought about going with Chris Rock. Will Smith put everything he could into that slap, and Chris Rock was unfazed. He kept doing his thing, clear like. He had to just be shocked. Had to be like, what the hell? That really just happened? And he just kept it moving. He kept it moving, presented his award, handled it about as well as you could handle it. Just took took an open... uh, By the way, who slaps another man? What are we doing, Will Smith? What are we doing? I, I don't... I don't know, man. That is... I still can't fully grasp the whole thing. And I hear a bunch of people... Well, if I was Chris Rock and I got slapped, I would have done this. He's working. He's presenting an award. He's got lines up on a on a screen somewhere that he's delivering. I he's he's getting paid to like if something like that happens, you don't even it takes you like probably an hour to process like what just happened. Well, it so, took Will Smith a little longer than an hour because then he went up and his acceptance speech was something. All you needed to know about his acceptance speech was the look on Venus Williams' face, where she was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Oh, it was, it was. But shout out to Chris Rock, and I believe Wednesday night is the first show uh, for his stand-up comedy tour that he is embarking on. I imagine that's going to be really funny, <laughs> like. Mm. The dude had his hands behind his back and just walked up there and full force slapped him. What was yeah. that? Hey, the timing is almost too good, isn't it? Right? To uh, to really capitalize off of that moment. Come on, Gabe. You know I love a good com- conspiracy theory. You Come do, on. but I, if Will Smith – I thought it was real the whole time because – and I, I was watching it with my wife, my sisters-in-law – uh, my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law and we were watching it. They're like, Oh, that had to be like, was that fake? Like what just happened? I was like, no, no, no. You do not mess with the audio on a broadcast. This important. Like you do not do that. Like that is, that is the number one no, no of producing and directing something of this magnitude, like something's going on. Right. <laughs> and then yeah. they showed like, you couldn't hear him, but anyone that could read lips saw what Will Smith said, and I was like, "Oh boy, this is this is juicy." Hey, with all the mentions they're getting, though, um, nobody was really watching, but they're capitalizing on it now. Like uh, they're going to start saying, "If we could create some type of drama like this every time, the ratings are going to continue to climb." Let's go. Let's work this. That maybe that's what they need to do, <laughs> but. Yeah, we'll see what ends up happening to Will Smith. The whole, like, he just slapped a dude and then you hand him his Oscar and, like... They said they... Asked him to leave and he said no? He refused. What do you mean he refused? Just kick him out. You have the security drag his ass out of there. (laughs) Mr. Smith refused. Well, then make him unrefuse. (laughs) Right you're not supposed to be asking him you're supposed to be telling him and i will say this there there are a lot of different groups in this country that i that i don't want to piss off right i i i think 
all of the comedians on planet earth, like the last group I would want to upset because it's, I don't know. It just feels like people that are really, really good at writing jokes for a living and attacking people with said jokes. I just, I wouldn't want to hurt, like go after one of the icons of their profession. I, I don't know. It just, it seems, seems like a bad idea. It does. And you know, Chris Rock, I'm sure he's done a ton of comedy shows in, you know, some far sketchier places than the stage of the Oscars. I, when a heckler or someone upset from the audience starts to make their way up there, I mean, you would think at some places you get nervous, right? But somehow the security at the Looney Bin in Oklahoma City is better than the security at the Oscars. Like, he was probably thinking, okay, he's mad, but this is the Oscars. Surely he's not going to come over here and slap me. If you were doing that set somewhere else, you may be really worried about what's about to happen. But he's like, ah, this is the Oscars. Nothing bad. <laughs> also, he's probably like, I've known Will Smith for 30 years. Right. <laughs> Just like, wow. there's no way. Oh, well, that was, that was one of the most shocking pop culture events of my lifetime where I was sitting there going like the most well-liked man in Hollywood just went up there and slapped one of the most famous comedians on the planet. It was, it was stunning. Yeah. I'll tell you what's interesting. Cause I, I'm, I'm torn because I, I think what Will Smith did is totally wrong absolutely do not condone that at all but at the same time i do recognize that a lot of things currently happening could be fixed if you if you were always under threat of being slapped whenever you said or did something stupid right i mean there's no doubt but that's just it's kind of not how the country works like no I know it. Yeah. I the joke wasn't even that good. No. I, it was it, and the joke wasn't offensive enough. It wasn't like, "Hey, I'm going to go slap you on stage offensive." Like it was the the reaction was I, and I know that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith have a, a whole lot going on with their relationship with how that whole thing works, but it was not it was not a I'm going to go slap this guy in the face offensive. It just wasn't. It was, it was, it was a dramatic reaction. Here's the thing. You, you think I should start slapping every person I hear a bald joke from? No. Right? It's not that big of a deal. It's not. It, you can't, you can't allow one person to make that big of an issue out of out of something that a bunch of people deal with. I mean, especially whenever a joke is being delivered by a comedian, I on stage, on television, but I, I mean, there's a lot of people that, that get far worse jokes than that thrown at them in those type of settings. You heard it here first, people. You make it, you make any more ball jokes to dead. He's going to come slap your ass. Uh, the precedent has been set. It's okay to slap people over bald jokes. I didn't even think about how this could be, how that could have been a situ, uh, kind of a sensitive situation for you. I that hadn't even crossed my mind. That's because, you know, I don't see hair, Ted. I just see you, man. And you, you look great, bald buddy. Well, yeah, you don't see hair because there's none there to see. <laughs> Uh, so oh, wait, hey, I you, got bald joke, slap myself. Slapped he, he did it, people. He slapped himself. All right. I also thought about going with everyone that complained about Josh Allen and the Bills not getting the ball in overtime against the Chiefs in the playoffs because the NFL's changing the overtime rule in the playoffs. Each team, they're gonna get the ball. So even if the team that gets the ball scores first, if they score a touchdown, the other team gets a chance. Uh, we'll see if that leads to different strategy of, you know, you know, deferring, letting the other team get the ball first. So you know what you got to get. 
I would assume that is what will happen with that whole situation, but who knows? But it seems like everyone's that yeah, this eliminates a lot of the bitching, right? Everyone's getting a possession, so no more complaining. Now it's it's one less thing that people can complain about, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. Um is there any other sport that has changed its overtime rules at two different levels more than NFL and college? Isn't it's hard it to keep insane? up with. <laughs> it really is hard to keep up with. Last year during the Texas game, uh, or I, I, I guess it was the it was the previous year during the Texas game. I was like, I was. I can't remember what, the, how when, many is it? Do we have to start going for two? <laughs> when do they go for two again? It's, it's the third overtime, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. okay. Oh man. Funny stuff. Yeah. All right. But my winner of the week, and this one may be a little controversial, Eric church. So love me some Eric church, big fan of his music, but he has angered his fan base Ted. He canceled a show on Saturday in San Antonio. So, okay, you're thinking, hey, family emergency. Maybe he's sick. Maybe something, you know, is wrong with the kid. Like, uh, nope. He wants to go to the Final Four. He's he's a big North Carolina fan. Canceled a concert because he said, I want to go watch Duke and Carolina play in the Final Four. And he said, it's a sports enthusiast's dream. I mean, I guess this is a power move if I've ever seen one from a musician. The guy is, I'll, I'll give him credit. The guy's living life he, the way that he wants to live it. But he had to have known that this would piss so many people off. And he still did it. He was like, you know what? I'm doing it. And I kind of respect the hell out of it. I'm not going to lie. I, it would suck if I had a ticket to that concert. I'd be pissed. But kind of kind of awesome because i feel like eric church and i are the same like our our lives revolve around sports <laughs> so I, I see both sides of it but i think i think i'm kind of leaning eric church's way on this one well if you can do it you can do it um it's weird like not even going to reschedule it not even gonna try and move it a day or two straight or canceled done uh that's interesting i bet there's a lot of mad people oh but there are i i'm trying to think of you know because if you if you he's got some like serious super fans that go all over the place watching him perform and stuff Big fan base. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I don't really know how I feel about it. If he's got the ability to just say, no, I cancel. I'm done. I'm going to the game. Did I guess that's, that's his, his right to do that. But I, I feel like the anger is going to fade really quickly. I, I just think he, he's got it. So, all the tickets get refunded, right? But there's more to it than that. So this is where I would like to personally challenge Eric Church, like, because you you refund the tickets automatically. That's easy. But you gotta gotta think about all the people that were supposed to work that concert. Yep. Concessions, security, like people, a lot of the times people well, those are, are a big draw. I mean, there's a reason that cities pay in partnership with um you know nba teams or whoever for arenas because they get proceeds and this generates a lot of economic activity in these areas when people come into town i mean that's a there's a reason why that that model exists because there's a bunch of people coming into san antonio hang out stay in hotels go to restaurants and bars to go see that concert that's gone too yeah, and let's not forget people that are coming from out of town. Flights. Flights ain't cheap right now. Hotel rooms. Like sir so, so there's some there's some sunk cost in this, especially like 
a lot of that stuff. Remember, this is what five days before the concert. I mean, so all I'm saying is, I I don't know how we would do it, but like, try to make that right, man. Try to make it right. Listen, I I love that you love sports. I love that, and he kind of made the comparison. He's like, you guys coming to see my show and like being in the crowd for my show is how. I feel going to a Carolina game. I was like, dude, this is not helping your, this, this comparison's not, they're still going to be mad, but I just, I, I feel like I love it. Cause it's, it's because it's a good reminder of how much sports means to, to people, but also like make it right for those people. You kind of just screwed over, you know? Yeah. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be expensive. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know. That's wild, dude. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens. I, I I, still think that the fans and the people that are mad, like it's going to be a small percentage of his fan base, and I feel like a lot of people will get over it fairly quickly. I'm with you. I could but be still. wrong about that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we didn't have tickets and a flight booked and a hotel booked for that show. So That's we'll, true. we'll see. All right, for my loser of the week, thought about going with the Los Angeles Lakers with no LeBron, <laughs> no Anthony Davis. They gave up 82 points and a half and got smacked by Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks, which means that currently the Lakers would not be in the play-in for the NBA playoffs. Hmm. I wonder, do you think, do you think they even want to make the playoffs? No, LeBron? I don't think so either. I feel like if you ask LeBron right now with the way this season is gone, if he wants to be in the playoffs, he's probably like, no, no early vacation. Let's go. I, I bet Russell Westbrook really misses Oklahoma city. Hmm. Not been pretty. We, we appreciated and loved you, Russ. We still do, man. It just, it has not gone well for our guy in LA. Just Ooh. hasn't, hasn't gone well, but my loser of the week, this one hurts too. I feel like I've done them a couple times here in the last month, the last couple months, Baker Mayfield. So things haven't gotten any better for the beloved sooner Baker. The guy just wants to get traded, right? He just wants to get traded so he can go and start and prove to everyone the the type of player he is so that he can get, you know, he can win some games and get a fat second contract, right? That's all he wants to do. Well, on Monday, Kevin Stefanski essentially said, hey, they want to trade Baker as soon as possible. I think it was like, hey, they want the they want to handle the situation. Well, that's good. But then... On Tuesday, Roger Goodell comes out and says that the NFL is still investigating the Deshaun Watson situation. He said there's no timetable for that investigation to conclude, but made it very clear that Watson still could be disciplined under the league's personal conduct policy. And even though the Browns signed Jacoby Brissett to be their backup, Brown's general manager, Andrew Barry said they really don't have a specific timetable for their quarterback room. And they'll see what happens over the next weeks or months. And then Josina Anderson puts a tweet out there that said, while anything can happen, my understanding is the Browns currently plan a patient approach with Baker Mayfield situation. It's also entirely possible they enter the regular season with Mayfield still on the roster and in position to suit up pending Deshaun Watson's playing status. What let Baker Mayfield free Cleveland trade him. Now they're not going to do anything. What suboptimal is probably the best way to put it, but trade the guy, man. Stop making him suffer. Um, Whoever told Josina Anderson that, if that was the GM, Andrew Barry, he's drunk. Um, 
Bayfer, Baker Mayfield is not suiting up for the Browns next season and playing. That is not happening. Zero chance that happens. Zero chance. What they're trying to do is since they totally crushed and destroyed and shredded any ounce of uh, trade value that Baker Mayfield had, they're trying to reestablish a little bit by acting as if, well, we don't necessarily need to trade him now. He could still play for us next year. Trying to push some teams into saying, okay, well, if we're going to do this thing, we need to offer up a little bit more because, you know, they may actually have him hanging around because like Goodell, Goodell's not going to issue any, any statement on whether or not he's going to suspend Deshaun Watson until the civil cases are cleared up. If the civil cases aren't cleared and he goes in and suspends Deshaun Watson, that's like leverage for the the plaintiff in that civil case, right? To say that, well, the NFL clearly says that he did something wrong here. So he's not going to make any type of preemptive action until the civil case has been decided. When it's decided, then something could happen. And who knows when that's going to take place. So right, there's a lot of time here for the Browns. And like, if they're wanting to trade him, like giving the appearance that you may keep him around is the only way to really speed it up if there's any way at all to do it. Yeah. Like that probably doesn't actually generate anything but that's my feeling on what they're trying to do all all i want for baker mayfield is for him to get to his new home for otas right and and i know some people think otas they, they don't matter and you know they're they're glorified walkthroughs whatever it's like if if you're baker and you're trying to get a massive second contract like every practice matters in my mind, he needs to get there, start developing relationships with his new teammates, wherever that's going to be, start working with his receivers, you know, needs to be with that training staff, developing a plan for that shoulder, like all of these things, like all this stuff takes place during that OTAs period. And I, I just want the guy to get to his new home because yeah. right now he's, he's a, He's a man with no home and it just, it, it I, I just want him to be set up for success this next season because it's, it's a critical season for his career. So that's why I saw this stuff. And I'm just like, damn man, everything that could go wrong for him has gone wrong for him. Like in the last six months, you know, with his health, now you got the Watson thing and all of this, like the Browns not even looping him in on it. Like, it's just, I don't know, but I just want the guy to get one break <laughs> and him getting to a new organization as soon as possible would be, would be the best thing for his career. So hopefully, I, hopefully he gets dealt at the latest, like, you know, draft night or something like that. That's what I was going to say. I think he's, I think he's a, a draft type of trade. Like, I think that's, that's whenever the action is going to start, start to move there and, you know, who knows teams that have their eye on taking a quarterback somewhere in the first or second round, maybe if they're not able to, then you may start to see some action move around Baker Mayfield. Yep.